Today, we're gonna to be going over three things. First, we're deploying a full stack fast API application to the cloud, and I'll show you the exact steps on how to do that. Next, we're connecting a Postgres database to our deployed full stack application. This is something that most tutorials skip entirely. And third, we're gonna go over something called preview service, which means every time you make a pull request, render will create a separate instance of your application. So you can see the changes before merging anything into main. This is a game changer that developers love. This video addresses all the challenges with deploying your application live for the entire world to use, including a production database and continuous delivery. If you're new to the channel, I'm Eric Roby, a software engineer with over 10 years of experience, and I've helped over 100,000 developers learn and grow within their craft. And hey, this video is sponsored by Render. They're a cloud platform that keeps things fast and simple, which are the two things that I love the most. So with that, let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so here's a quick example of the application we're gonna be deploying live with continuous delivery. We can have a register or a login. If we log in, we can see that it's gonna be our workout and routine manager, or we can create new workouts like push-ups, do 20 chests to the ground, pull-ups, five chests to the bar, where you can create new workouts and descriptions. And then over here, you can create routines, which combines the workouts to create a routine. So here we can say like full upper body workout. If you click that, it'll say full upper body workout. We added a medium difficulty description and we added the workouts of push-ups and pull-ups. So if we go ahead and we look at the code, we can see that we are using a fast API application and the fast API application is connected to SQLite and it's using Jinja front end for us to be able to see everything on the UI. Now, the very first thing we wanna to do to be able to deploy this live is we wanna push this to a GitHub remote repository. Now, creating a GitHub remote repository is pretty simple. You just have to go to github.com, create your account, and then when you create your account, you're gonna be sent somewhere here. This is like my coding with Roby GitHub account. And from here, we can go ahead and say create new repository. We can name the repository anything we want, like render deployment. We can skip over the description. You can make it public or private. I'm gonna say private, and we can say add a readme. If not, if we look at our code, we already have a readme, so we don't need to go ahead and create one. And we can skip over everything else and just say create repository. And it creates the repository super fast. Once you create this repository, all you have to do is go ahead and add all of these. Now, the only thing that's kind of different are these last two. The other ones, I'm gonna kind of follow what they're saying, but I kind of wanna show you step-by-step step on what's happening. So I am inside our source directory, and all we have to say is git init, which initializes a new repository. We can say git dash a, so this just means git everything, which means we are going to add everything inside here. We need to make a commit, so I'm gonna say git commit, initial commit, and then from here, all we have to do is add that branch to this remote repository. We can do that by saying that, and then we're just gonna to wanna to push everything up there. So go ahead and do this now. And there we have it. We have now just deployed everything to our render deployment. And now if we go back into our GitHub, we can see that we have our render deployment all deployed. Perfect, so once we do that, what we wanna do is head over into Render. Now, Render is this application where you can deploy apps, APIs, and AI workloads in minutes. Go ahead, make an account. Once you make an account, you're gonna to go to your dashboard where we're gonna get four different options of things that we can deploy which is deploy a web service, deploy a static site, create a Postgres database, or explore all the other type of services that are allowed. What we wanna do here is deploy a web service. And now here we need to connect our GitHub account, which is the account that we just created, and then the code that we just pushed to our GitHub account. So we can do this by saying, click GitHub. You're gonna to have to log into your account. I'm gonna say authorize a render. And when you do this, we can say all repositories or only select a few repositories. Now I'm gonna say only select repositories. And from here, I'm gonna select our render deployment. Once you select that, you can go ahead and say install. That will connect your render account to your GitHub account so you can deploy this render deployment. All right, so from here, we can keep the name of render deployment. You can name it whatever you would like. I'm going to scroll down. We're gonna leave the language at Python 3. We're gonna be using the main branch of our GitHub. Now our region, we can select whatever we want. You can select whatever's closest to you. I'm just gonna leave it at Oregon, US West. Root directory can be left blank. 
our build command, which is how you install all the dependencies since we're using a requirements.txt file, we're just gonna say pip install dash r requirements.txt. And then for our start command, we can say uvicorn API dot main colon app dash dash host zero 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 port 10,000. In this uvicorn API main colon app, that's the command because of how our current application is structured that it's pooling from main. Now for our instance type, we can go ahead and say free, scroll down, and we need to set our environmental variables. If we look at our render application, we can see that we have this .env file. This is for authentication. We're gonna to wanna to make sure that we just grab this and move them over to our environmental variables right here. So we can say auth secret key. We want this secret key. We wanna add another environmental variable of auth algorithm with HS256 and say deploy web service. Now render is very fast. It's gonna deploy this application in just a few minutes and you're gonna have an entire application live using everything we need for users around the world to be able to access it. All right, and we got service is live. So we go ahead and click this link. We can see our applications right here where we can just register and we can log in with our application, like the application is fully live with authentication and a SQLite database. But what we want to do is connect our application to a production ready Postgres database, right? We don't want to rely on SQLite. We want to use Postgres. So what we can do here from render is we can say new and we want to create a new Postgres database. Now here we can name it whatever we want. I'm going to name it coding with Roby database. And now for the database username and all that kind of stuff, we can just leave it all default. We don't need to select anything ourselves. It will create all of the usernames and passwords and everything for us automatically. So we don't have to worry about that. We can keep everything exactly how it is. We can select free for our free database. And here we can just go ahead and say create database. Now, when you create this database, it's going to take a few seconds to create, but what we're going to get is a URL that we need to then connect to our fast API application. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this new URL. We are going to configure it to work with our current code base. And then we're going to push that code change and have it just automatically deploy to render. So then our application is connected to a Postgres database. And just within a few seconds, we can see the application is deployed. And what we can do here is we can say connect, and this is the URL that we need right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this URL that it just gave us, go back into our code. The first thing I'm gonna do is jump into our .env file, where I'm gonna add a new variable of database path, which is equal to the URL to our database path of our Postgres database. Now what we can do is go to API database core, and now inside here, we need to configure our application to now use that new environmental variable for our Postgres database location instead of using SQLite. And we can do that by using .env, which is going to load our environmental variable file. And then we can add our database path as our SQL Alchemy database URL, which is gonna be our database path that we have in our .env file. And then we just wanna create our engine from there. So now if we go ahead and say get status, we can see our code change that happened right here in our database core.py file. We want to add everything, git commit. We're just gonna say using Postgres database. And then we can say git push. This will push the change to GitHub. So right here, if we refresh, we can see right here that this API was changed right now. Then if we go back into our render application, we'll see that our application is updating, but what we wanna do real quick is jump into render deployment. Let's jump into our environment variables, edit, and what we're gonna to wanna to add here is our database path, and we're gonna to wanna to add this URL. Now, if we go back into our render application, and now we can see our service is live, if we go ahead and check it out, boom. It is going to be working just as expected. We can create a new user. We can register. Register was successful. We can then log in. And this is all connected to our Postgres database that we have. Now, the third thing we're gonna see is called the service preview. And if we go back into our render deployment and we click previews, 
we can spin up temporary instances of our services to test out the proposed code changes. Now, what we can do here is just say edit automatic. So every time we create a PR, we're going to create a temporary instance for us to be able to see our changes. And now what we can do is if we go back into our code and we go to our templates index, and let's go ahead and say we want to change our login button to now say sign in. And maybe we want our register button to say sign up. And we save that. And then after we do that, we need to create a new branch or a new feature branch. So we can say checkout dash B where I can say feature slash change button text. Once we're on this branch, we need to add our new changes. We are going to commit these new changes where I'm going to just name it the same thing of change button text. We're then going to want to push this feature branch and we can do this by just setting an upstream. And once we do this, it's going to show us how we can automatically create a pull request. So let's go ahead and just click on this link. I'm going to go back into our browser. I'm just going to paste it right here. This is going to create our PR where we can see our old text and our new text with the sign in and sign up. Let's go ahead and just say create pull request. Now this does not yet merge into main. We need to set this up ourselves. So if we clicked merge, that would merge it into main. But what we can see is that render automatically picked up this new change as a request to deployment. If we go back into our render right now and we just like refresh to make sure everything looks good, we can see that the change button text is now inside our preview. If we go to our actual application and we click this link, we can see that it still says login and register. However, we are doing a separate deployment right here. And just like that, we have our preview. So we can see sign in and sign up. We're over here on our actual deployed application. It says login and register. This says sign in and sign up. And if we think everything looks okay, we can jump back into our pull request, say merge, confirm the merge. And then once it merges into main, render is going to deploy that all to our production application automatically. That is how you set up continuous integration and deploy a full stack fast API application on render. Hope you're able to learn something new and I'll see you in the next video.